Hi there. My name's Bill Darrington, and I'm from Persia, Iowa. And Persia, Iowa is in the, in the western hills of Iowa. I'm 30 miles from Omaha, Nebraska. And we're, we're dealing with a lot of rough, hilly terrain in my area. And we're strip tilling, have been strip tilling since about 1980. And at the time when we started strip tilling, uh, primarily we were doing it as a method of banding our nutrition in the row for more efficient utilization of that fertilizer. We, we really didn't see and couldn't grasp the benefit of broadcasting our fertilizer when we knew where we were creating a root environment. When you know where your roots are gonna go, the obvious option for placing your nutrition is in that zone. So that's where we got started with the, the strip till and the nutrient banding system. How we're doing that is we run 28% nitrogen a liquid material and we place that with a knife. We place that primarily with an anhydrous style knife. In that mix we also run 729.5 which is a NPK. We also will run usually a quart of zinc. We run ammonium thiosol ATS to help stabilize. Uh, we run potassium thiosol in a separate tank. The potassium thiosol weighs about 12 pounds per gallon. 28 weighs 10.67. So the reason we run two tanks on our applicator, two pumps, and two tubes on the knife is so that we can get that liquid potassium into that nutrient zone. Uh, when you've got a, a 10 pound material and a 12 pound material, what happens is that thiosol will drop and the liquids, you'll actually see them segregate themselves inside the tank. So that's why we've got to run two tanks and two systems, two delivery mechanisms on that toolbar. Within that mix, we also run about one pound of sugar. And the reason we run the sugars is when you look at the components of what nitrogen does, why we use nitrogen. What nitrogen is, is it produces proteins. In order for that conversion of nitrogen to true plant proteins to take place, we need sugars or carbohydrates involved in that. So what we're doing by adding a pound, a pound and a half of, of a carbohydrate, a carbon source, i.e. sugars, what we're doing is we're forcing the components that are required for that protein production, we're forcing them to combine. We're adding them natural required components to be together in that blend. It makes our nitrogen utilization more efficient it also acts as a nitrogen stabilizer because now we've taken something that's relatively salty and, and generally unfriendly to the biology. We've added some sweetener to it. You know, we put a little bit of ketchup on that old piece of liver. We've made it something so that biology will grab onto it. The biology will feed. When the biology feeds on that material, we have now helped to secure that nitrogen because now we've got it held in biological suspension. Instead of sitting there just in soil solution, we get the biology to come feed on that and they will help hold and stabilize that nutrient from volatilization or leaching. That combination of sugars and nitrogen to come in with a, a one pound application rate of sugar, most of the times it's gonna be somewhere in that 50 to maybe a high of maybe 80 cents per acre. And I have a lot of guys say, well, yeah, but does it really pay for itself? If you can't justify a 50 to 75 cent investment, and if you probably shouldn't bother, you don't try it. But when you understand uh, the composition of a plant, a plant is 96% carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. As farmers, we've been taught and we rely on nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, all the rest of the micronutrients. Well, that entire grouping of other nutrients is only actually 4% of the makeup of that plant. So why would we not take our management decisions and look at what it takes to increase the, the health, the performance of that 96% column? One way we can do that, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, is something as simple as regular old sugar. Sugar has an analysis of C6H12O6. So we are implementing and using some form to stimulate that 96% of the column on that plants. Uh, we're doing something to stimulate and benefit 96% of that plant's composition. 
and that's some of the reason that I use sugar every time I go across a field. Um, I have gone to Walmart and I have bought 25 pound bags. I've emptied the shelves of Walmart sugar. Um, I've gone to Sam's Club and I've ordered it by the pallet. You can get a 2,500 pound pallet of sugar from Sam's Club. Um, at this point in time, I'm using a material that's actually is made of four different components. It's glucose, sucrose, dextrose, and fructose. And that is, is another source that we're using. Um, I've talked to guys that have gone to some of the Coca-Cola and Pepsi facilities and they actually will get the old leftover Coca-Cola or Pepsi because it carries a good volume of sugar. Also within that mix, we're lucky enough, if you're a label reader, to see that it uses phosphoric acid. We got phosphorus. We got carbon dioxide. We've got caffeine, which can act as a plant growth stimulant. Plus, we still have the sugars. So, you know, if you, if you want to entertain yourself while you're at the grocery store with a wife, start being a little bit of a label reader and look at some of them labels and see what the components are. And a lot of times you'll find that there's nutritional benefits. Uh, you know, something as silly and simple as Gatorade has MKP, monopotassium phosphate. You can put that in. If you want a cheap place, an easy place to play with some of these things, if you think I'm a little bit kooky for talking about sugars, I highly recommend getting some squirt bottles and mixing up a batch, taking uh, half a can of Coca-Cola. You want the real thing, you don't want the decaf. Take the regular, dump it in a squirt bottle, maybe about eight ounces, filled up with water. Go out and squirt the wife's garden down early in the morning. Do that about twice a week, and like I say early in the morning so that you don't take the heat of the sun, maybe have a little dew, a little dampness, help with uptake, but you're increasing the sugars. And actually, it's amazing what you can do to most of the, the foods in a garden by increasing that natural sugar, because the plant will pull that in and treats it kind of like a liquid photosynthesis. Because as we've been roughly taught on how photosynthesis works, ultimately, it's sugar production. And kind of what I tell guys is what we're doing is it's, it's liquid sunshine, is what I call the sugars addition to, to a foliar or to a nitrogen program, is we're adding them components of what photosynthesis does through sunshine, is a formation of plant sugars. And that's the very simple rationale of how and why this works very effectively.